we are diving into the world of importing from Turkey, a topic that seems overwhelming but incredibly rewarding if correctly done. So stick around as I reveal these common mistakes that you can avoid while importing from Turkey. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Olichi. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi, you're welcome to my channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back to the channel. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. And yeah, let's dive into this video. So the first mistake is not researching the market. Before you make the decision to import from Turkey, you should know what is required or the scarcity that is in your market in your country instead of just importing a lot of unnecessary goods try to do a market research to know what people are looking for in your home country you don't want to be overstocked that is buying a lot of items that you won't sell out or your audio or your customers or market don't require then also check out your competitors like just to know what exactly they are selling how they are selling it what their price range are if possible you can find out their suppliers you should also identify your target audience are you going to be selling clothes for instance are you selling these clothes for younger ladies who go out or are you selling this for corporate people and uh, like i'm going to be using women in general so are you selling this for women in the corporate world You're like the suits, the dresses, is that your target audience? Are you going to be selling baby wares? Just know who your target audience are before you start importing. The second mistake will be choosing your suppliers. So I know that getting suppliers in Turkey might be a little bit difficult, especially if you've not been to Turkey. And I know that the trust level might not be there. However, I already made a video, it's going to pop up, on how you can find the suppliers and how to know which ones are good by the quality and popularity. For me, I like to go for suppliers that have good reviews and they are a bit popular. They might be a bit expensive because then as you get popular, your price increases. However, it's better for you to have a trusted supplier that is going to give you your money's worth. If you are not sure of the supplier, you can ask for samples. Samples are not free, so you might have to pay for them. But there are some suppliers who don't give samples, like they don't sell one item, they sell in series. If you've watched my video, you know what I'm talking about. So that might be a bit difficult. Then ask them for samples so that you can try out their, quant their quality. If you are able to like travel down to Turkey, I would highly suggest that so that you can see the items that you are buying. You can just visit their store because most times they don't take you to their warehouse where they are manufacturing this. So you can just visit their store just to see the, qual the quality of what you are getting. Third point will be ignoring quality control. So when I mean ignoring quality control, it's the same point as my second point which is finding a supplier that has a good quality so quality issues can damage your reputation i've seen a lot of people who stay with good quality but once they now got the audience they they now stay bringing in rubbish and then people start dragging them for changing their quality so for you to avoid all this it's just good to make sure that you get good quality make sure you're importing good quality into your country if you can't get to the factory or to the store by yourself to check out this quality make sure you have like a third party the third party will be a trusted agent so make sure you have an agent that can check it out for you and also let the suppliers know what your specifications are like tell them what you're expecting from these items because then you are paying for it i'm not talking about the people that are customizing if you're customizing a particular fit like clothes you have to tell them your specification you have to do what you want however if you are buying already branded clothes you can still tell them that oh this is what you're expecting this is the quality that you want and if they are not meeting up to that quality then you leave them alone just because it's cheap doesn't mean that the quality is good and just because it's expensive doesn't mean that the quality is good the best thing is just to find a supplier that has good quality 
okay? The fourth mistake is ignoring custom rules and regulations. Every country has their own exportation and importation rules. Turkey has no exemption. So ensure that you understand the custom requirements, your taxes, your importation fees for your country or the country that you are shipping these items to. If you don't know all this, you might fall prey of non-compliance and this non-compliance can result to delay in shipments, it can cause more import, importing fines and even seizures of your goods like they can seize your goods. So quick story, when I was in Cyprus, at a point makeup was not allowed. So when I used to receive PR in Cyprus, my goods were always seized or the custom would charge me money for them to release those items. I was not aware of all these regulations, but after a couple of times, I had to like learn about the custom duty and everything concerning Cyprus. So make sure you are aware of what is acceptable and not in your home country. I had clients that complained that their goods were seized at point of exportation or importation entry. And sometimes they don't, they don't just listen. For instance, the previous one that I had, this customer shipped perfumes inside her order. Like, she came to Istanbul, bought these items, and decided to put perfumes inside the items. You can get away with all that when you are packaging your stuff and all that. But when it got to the um, exporting place, like in Turkey, it was even held in Turkey, it was not even held in Nigeria. When it got to Turkey, they stopped the whole um, package from moving. Why? Because they suspected that there, were, there was liquid inside and the liquid was flammable. Perfume is flammable. So they had to delay her package and she had already left Istanbul. So imagine having to go back and forth. You don't want to have all those stress. So make sure you know about all these custom rules just to prevent yourself from having situations like this. If you're not sure, ask questions or Google it to know what your country allows and what Turkey also allows so you don't have those miscommunications, okay? So the fifth point I have is poor logistic plan. If you didn't know, having an efficient logistic planning is key to a successful business. Imagine having to tell your customers that, oh, your items are going to arrive in three to five days. Like, people get excited for that. Or if you even tell them, oh, you can get same day delivery. People get excited for that. I don't want the one that I order something and I have to wait for like two weeks for just one item. So logistics plays a huge role for the success of your business. So in this situation, make sure you plan out your shipping methods. If you are going to be using air, know that this is how many days it will take. If you are going to be using sea, know that this is how many weeks or months it will take. Also, choose reliable cargo companies. Know that sometimes some events are inevitable and I really don't blame these logistic companies, but when you find out that it's like a pattern, like let's say you order this week and they delay your package, you're like, okay, cool, no problem. Eh, it's custom problem. Next, next month, they do the same thing. This time around, it might even be worse than the first time. And they keep repeating the same thing. No, that is a red flag. I will understand that maybe sometimes they don't have control over it and it's not their fault. But then find a company that is reliable because them shipping to you also makes your work easier to your customers. So make sure you find a reliable cargo company. The sixth mistake is inadequate budgeting. Importing comes with a lot of cost. Like you have to think of your product's cost, like how much it is to purchase that item. Your shipping costs, you're going to think of that. You're also going to think of custom duties and many more. Like, it involves a lot. You cannot just wake up and say, okay, I have 200000 and I want to start shipping from Turkey, and I need to make profit. I mean, you can wake up and do that, but then you have to plan. You have to know, okay, if I have 200000 I can use one fifty to buy items, and then budget my 50 k for shipping. It might not cost you up to 50 k but then, nevertheless, you've made that plan. You finish buying your items, and then there's no money to ship it. No, don't do that. So I've had someone who I personally shopped for, shipped it to Nigeria, and then he then discovered that 
the price of what he bought is almost equivalent, if not more than the amount he's going to pay to collect it. And then at that point, here in my home country, the dollar is always fluctuating. One of the issues, like imagine buying something for 150,000 and it comes to Nigeria and you have to clear it for almost that amount because the dollar is high. What I personally do is that if I bring out money, I know that this is what is supposed to be spent. This is what I will use for my shipping. This is what I will pay. If I'm not coming to, um, to Istanbul, this is what I'll pay the agent. This is what I'll use to procure the items stuff like that so just ensure that you plan correctly the seventh mistake so not building relationship so when you buy from all these suppliers most times they don't remember but then you have to give them an impression like you have to be enthusiastic about your purchase just so that it can give you next time when you come to other from them they can give you discounts they they will tell you which quality of items they have like they are more truthful to you and this is not just about Turkish people this is about humans in general presently in Nigeria if I have someone that I buy soup items from and I've gotten the first time from them and maybe when I came up like ah and see how markets now ha ah, this thing that you sold for me now how am I going to do this and she gives me a whole way of how I can do that and I'm like okay no problem the next time, even if I send somebody to her and I tell her, oh, is that woman that bought Ogo from you? She'll be like, oh, that's my customer. And then she gets excited. Oh, how is she? Oh, tell her I gave her this extra. So that is building relationship. So you have to build relationship with these people, be it your suppliers, be it your agent, because if you don't have a good relationship with your agent, your agent is going to run you street. Like when I mean run you street, if you are the type that you are always dragging and all that in as much as they make money from it you don't want to go through all that stress so just try to keep a cordial relationship with the people involved in your business that's the shipping company the suppliers your agents your customers make sure you communicate well with them show them appreciation like now if your agent got something for you you can say okay uh, let me give you extra 5k just saying i'm not saying you shouldn't be dashing money but yeah, if someone is doing the work, you appreciate them. I'm going to give you guys a bonus point just because I'm being nice. Not having a plan B. The shipment might could be delayed, the products might be bad, market demand can change. So just make sure you have a plan B for all this. I know that there are some that we can't control. For instance, shipping delays. We can't control all those ones because once in a while, somebody is just out there trying to be the devil's and right hand man and then cause inconveniences for other people but then just have like plan B the plan B could be of oh, trying to source it out from somewhere else or talking to your customers to tell them oh this is what's up um, can I do this so that we can get this can we do this can we come to a common ground stuff like that having a plan B will just help you nav navigate through any challenges that doesn't disrupt your business yeah you have it these are mistakes you can avoid when importing from turkey in general like anywhere in general not just turkey because this could apply to any place be it canada us china just anywhere these tips will help you to avoid having issues hope you found this video helpful if you did please give this video a thumbs up make sure you share it to your friends or people that are interested in starting an importation business make sure you like share subscribe and i'll see you in my next one bye guys